Hey, good morning, guys. <clears throat> this is Matthew. We're going to be continuing our journey with uh, WordPress web de web development uh, of a portfolio site for typically an artist or a designer. Tomato, tomato. Um, last time we left off, we were creating some pages, and we also got some really good insight into um, how to adjust your, your menu and how to add some of the pages that you've been creating to that menu. If we go back to the site itself, this is where it's at right now. This is the one that I'm building. So this is the development site, the new one. Um, as stated just a few seconds ago, we adjusted the menu and I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, pages that are ready to accept some new information. Okay. And if you look back in the previous video, that was done by simply duplicating the right sidebar layout. So if you need review on that, you need to go to the, the previous video. And in fact, I touched on it on the two previous videos. So the project three and four um, tutorials. Um, I think the first video I did a couple, and then the second video I did maybe three. Of course, that totals five. Um, if we click on portfolio, there's the standard portfolio page that I'm going to continue to leverage and use. I haven't gotten there yet, you know, like really sort of torquing and adjusting things, but I'll get there. Um, and then I ended up not using the default about page and creating another page that would be appropriate for um, just dropping in some CV or about information. We'll get there. And I am opting not to use the default contact page that came with the theme and, and instead I'm just going to ask the user to message me through social media. I, I've, I've said this before, I think that social media is a better way for folks to reach out to you because there's less spam. Um, at, this at this stage in the game, almost everyone has a Facebook account. Um, and if they don't have one, um, well, you can come to your own conclusions as to whether or not they're going to hire you for services or, or buy one of your paintings if they don't have a Facebook or social media account in some shape or form. Um, social media is just ubiquitous. It's part of life. It's part of life now. Email is handy, of course, and you do need to correspond with folks through regular old email, but uh, not through your public portal. You will get a lot. Of, I, I still get a lot of spam, but it's it's been cut down dramatically when I realized that I can't put my email address anywhere online publicly. It's just craziness. That's all another story. Okay, so let's get started. Let's kind of think about what we're going to do first. Also, just to kind of walk you through the front page, um, I think this is all pretty well set, and the navigation is set up too. So we've got the navigation here that's actually leading to these pages. We also set up some real nice sort of web URLs um, that make sense. So in other words, this path for the web architecture should actually sync up or match what's happening here. So for example, BOL2127 is a child of um, the portfolio page, okay? So this is BOL2127, and that's why it says portfolio, and then BOL2127. That's really important. This should essentially mimic what is happening with your menu. Now, that being said, you don't want to like, I have, uh, I don't know, 100 completed works on my website. There's not enough room here to have all that stuff. And so you can have pages, but the pages don't necessarily have to be on the menu, but those pages are still a child of this work portfolio or work page. So keep that in mind. We'll kind of touch on that a little bit more later. Um, we're not quite there yet, but but in general, just kind of follow this rule of thumb. 
the the portfolio page is the parent page of of the the project pages that you're developing and working on and you know this is a this is a class guys and so i don't want you guys to think that you have to ha have all 50 or 100 uh, pages set up for your portfolio website maybe just starting with five or ten is a really good place to start you know your most uh, maybe recent works or works that you're really proud of but i'll leave that up to you i mean i, I i'm i'm very aware that each of you who are taking this class have different visions for how you want to present yourself online and so that's that's the real you know again WordPress is easy, but figuring out how to organize all of these things is the real task. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this with this class, I know it's going relatively fast, but my goal is for you to really kind of just get your toes or your feet wet a little bit so that you're more comfortable and confident uh, using the WordPress in conjunction with a rocket theme. Okay. Um, so without, uh, wasting any more time, me kind of like spouting rhetoric about web development and, you know, the learning process, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to do actually, uh, and this is really interesting too. There's in web design one, we learned about H ones, H twos, H threes, H fours. You'll notice that, and by the way, we're on BOL two twelve seven right now. So we're on a project page. And at, at some point, I basically want to replace this information, okay? And <clears throat> there's, the, the H1 is actually, it's a little deceptive. The H1 is actually up here. This is the H1. And so, but I am actually going to be removing this banner because I don't, First of all, in order to modify this banner, you actually have to do it on the back end. It's one of the problems with this theme. And so, but you can just simply turn it off as well. And so that's what I'm going to be doing for this particular um, project is I'm just going to be turning the banner off, but I can't have a page without an H1. You guys know this because you've taken web design one with me. Uh, every single page needs an H1 for SEO and Google Analytics. So I'm basically going to create or use some, some developed uh, code with text and navigation for each of these pages. I'm, I'm essentially going to solve the problem once, and then I'm going to copy and paste that code into multiple pages, all right? And I'm going to show you really quickly on my current website that's that's live. Okay. Uh, this should look familiar. This is, yeah, this is my website. And there are more projects on the front end, giving folks more entries into my, my system or my web architecture. And instead of having unique projects for my website, I actually have these categories these chronological five-year categories that um, that sort of cluster works together. So for example, if you go all the way back to 2000, 2004, my work does look quite different. I was doing a lot of printmaking and I was still, in all honesty, I was still growing and discovering myself as an artist. Um, some of this stuff was done as an undergrad. Like these are these are drawings that I did as an undergrad. This painting right here, I did it in 2001. So I did it maybe the semester before I graduated with my BFA. I was still learning how, how I was still finding my voice. And then if you look at works that are more recent, you know, things have changed quite a bit. It's still me, but you know, it's, it's an evolved sense of self. Um, and so that's kind of what I, what I want folks to, to see you know, when they go to my website, that I have these different sort of stages in research and in thinking and development. And, and really, I mean, it goes back to whatever I'm experiencing in my life, and whatever I'm curious about, and how that feeds into my art practice. 
<clears throat> um, but notice how there is no BOL 212.7. It's not here on the menu, but if you actually come over here, it's it, BOL 212.7 is here. It's actually right there. It's just nestled into the into the uh, five year categories. And so I can click on this and it goes to this page. Okay, so just out of curiosity, in fact, that's not BOL 212.7, that's BOL 212.6. So I made a mistake, that's 212.7, there we go. So uh, these are both right sidebar layouts, but the this one still has the banner. It has the prepackaged text happening that comes with the theme. It has these two sort of modular squares on the right hand side, which what I've done is I actually replaced that text with some images that are clickable. Because I want folks, uh, there's a strategy happening here that I developed for my website. There's a linear strategy, and then there's also an organic strategy. So if I click on 212.7, it's automatically going to go back, like sort of in time. The next image chronologically is 212.6. And then if I click that again, 212.5, and click that again, 212.4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you'll notice the other thing that's happening here is there are these images on the right hand side that are just kind of peppered in randomly. And that's so that folks can sort of hop around on the lily pads of my work more organically or randomly rather. So this, if I if the user clicks on this image, it's just gonna go to the immediate previous image in my timeline. But if they, they might see this and think, oh, that looks really interesting. And then the user will click on that and it'll just take them to a completely different place. And I want that, I, I'll tell you something, I want that because it's good for SEO. You know, that, that randomness, that, that, that double strategy that I'm implementing, that's kind of an SEO strategy that I'm thinking of. But it's also just good for the user. All right, because it allows them to kind of explore a little bit and just see what I what I what I had been doing. Um, and then, of course, if they they always want to, they can come back up here and click on a category and just kind of see this big snapshot of what I was doing visually for a period of time. So I, I, I just kind of wanted to take a back step and explain, you know, essentially my rationale for how I set up my website, my web architecture, okay? And talking you through how I envision a user coming to my site and just being able to essentially just kind of explore and bomb around and look at, look at who I am visually and what I'm thinking about and how I'm expressing myself. Sometimes the documentation improves also, you know, well, I think there's another video where we're going to talk about documentation and assets a little bit further, but I mean, all of these paintings, like I know, like, you know, for example, these paintings, they could be re-photographed because in all honesty, when you see these paintings in person, the color is a little bit more vibrant. Um, I also have a new camera now, you know, that gets better details. I'm, my camera skills are always improving, um, but that's an example of I mean, my work I've found personally is difficult to, to document. And so with this class, I want everyone to really start thinking about that. I mean, what good is doing a painting if no one sees it the way that they would see it in person, if you get my drift. So you have to find a way to really kind of simulate that experience the best that you can. And that's another reason why I have a full image and I have these detail images to sort of just provide another 
layer of insight like this is actually a perspective view as well so it's a little bit out of focus out here but it shows the the depth of the detailed work that i'm doing um you guys each and every one of you you're going to have to decide uh how this is all going to work oh the other thing is that uh there's sort of a back pedal simple link up here you can click on that and it'll take you back to the category of as far as the years. Okay. Okay. So the next step is, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you guys the code that I'm, that I'm using. It's not rocket science code either. It's the same, it's the same stuff that you already know about really well from <clears throat> web design one. And so if I go to the back end of my site, which looks pretty much similar to what you guys are experiencing, there's the Fluent theme right here. Uh, there's the Pages location on WordPress. And then you can see all the pages that I've been doing. I do have an SEO plugin installed, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit because it just makes life a little bit easier. Okay. Um, but let's start with BOL 212.7, okay? So I need the code. I need to go into the Fluent backend, and I need the code. And I'm going to go to just any old page. Look at there are all the pages, the right sidebar pages that I've duplicated similar to what I'm showing you in the tutorials. I can click on any of them. And again, you know, this is all inherited, so you don't want to unlock that. But here's the main bar with content, and it says custom here. And you can click on the gearbox. And I just want you guys to look at this code real quick. Look at, there's an H1 that just says Lauren. That's the title of the piece. And then there's an AHREF with some text and also a link. You know, I mean, you can, there's another HREF with the JPEG. You can also see that um, my SEO naming conventions for each of these files is following my plan on my Google spreadsheet. Remember when I was thinking about SEO keywords that I could actually plug in to my uh, my my image names? So I have my last name because if anyone downloads my image, I at least want them to know the last name. I have the, the category number, and then I just simply have some SEO keywords that might be helpful. I'm also thinking about SEO here. So this is a this particular image is a print. And so that's why I plugged in this word intaglio. The title is Lauren. And then I, I just kind of think that it's handy to have your name coming up over and over again regarding this stuff. So you can plug in your name. You gotta so you sort of have to randomize things because if your pages are doing the same thing over and over again as far as keywords. SEO is not going to like that. So you have to change it up. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing, what I am doing to sort of increase the odds that Google is going to like my site and, and they're going to move it up in the ranking. So if someone types Matt Bollinger, hopefully it'll be number one instead of number five on the list. That's really what we're trying to do. So notice there's an H1, Google's going to like that. There's an H2. I don't need anything beyond that. But this navigation that I set up, it's very, very simple, but it's going, it's going to take the user to the quote unquote next page chronologically. Notice how this href is going to 2021. Notice how this href is going to 2021. Okay. And your your URL is not going to be yourname.com yet because currently 
your web install is on artdesigndc slash gd313 slash spring-2023, yada, yada, yada. So you guys, I, I think you're at a point where, where you guys understand the context of your install circumstance um, and essentially how you have to be really, you have to be mindful of that when you're thinking about this sort of thing. So anyway, I'm going to give you this code. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to create a new, let's see, so now I've got that plugged and ready to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is cancel out of there. And I also want to get this code for these locations on the right-hand side, right? Because that's more navigation. And that's really simple code, too. Look how simple this is. Easy peasy. And I'm going to call this main page. And then I'm going to call this organic nav. I'm going to save that on my desktop because I am going to be giving you guys this code. Okay. All right. So, I mean, that's for the most part, what we need from my install. Now let's go back and make some changes. Let's go, remember we've got these pages set up. There's one, two, three, four, five. If I click on that page, currently there's nothing there. Because remember, we do a lot of our heavy lifting and work customizing pages. In this particular circumstance, with ro a rocket theme, we do it on the rocket theme back end. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select one of those pages. And notice how it looks pretty darn similar. This is the, says the right sidebar example. And actually, let's go to that. This is uh, BOL 210.12. Let's go there. I'm pretty sure that's sawmill site analysis, yes. So again, in my circumstance, when I was showing you guys my site, if I click on a page, there is no banner at the top. I did that purposefully. Maybe I should change that. I maybe I will later. I'm not going to do it today though. Okay. Um, but for the way that I have this code set up, I'm migrating my H1 to the actual page. So that's my H1 on this particular page. So you'll notice though that. This is sort of, um, <clears throat> well, it's muted or it's uh, faded out, indicating that, you know, you're not supposed to go in there. That's, we're going to break a rule here and we're actually going to go into this slideshow right sidebar example banner. So I have to come up here to inheritance and say no inheritance, apply and save. And then I have to go into the blue gear box and do the same thing. No inheritance, apply and save. Now I can get in there. But really what I want to do is I just want to turn it off. That's all I want to do. And to turn it off, all I have to do is, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I have to click on the blue gear box and then just toggle this guy right there, apply and save. And if we go back here and refresh, it's gone. 
real nice and clean and simple. Okay, so now we got to plug in this code, right? Let's try it. Same thing. Look at this. These guys are muted, like like you don't have the keys to the castle. But we need to get in there. Inheritance, drop down, no inheritance, apply and save. Inheritance. Apply and save. Now, if I click on that blue gearbox, I can get in here and I can modify this code. I don't need to modify anything. I just need to go in there, select all, delete, then paste the new code. Apply and save. I'm going to do the same thing over here, guys. No inheritance, apply and save. No inheritance, apply and save. Because I want to be able to get into the into the castle. No inheritance, apply and save. Okay. Well, I need to plug in that code as well, though. Let's see what I can do. Because I have two locations. Select all, Command V, or Control V, depending on your machine. Let's check our work. Make sure we save everything. Command R for refresh. Okay, so the code is there but it can't find basically it can't find the images right okay also i mean uh, the code needs to be modified a little bit because this is assuming that you know uh work 2000 to 2004 <coughs> we need to modify that and in fact, we can do that here. Look, I mean, because we're familiar enough with code, we can see we just need to say portfolio. And it's kind of interesting. There's just this little kind of chevron or arrow. There it is right there. Like, I really like that simplicity. You know, it just indicates that you know you want to go backwards or you want to go forwards. So, so that's what is being indicated right there. And then simply next, and then this little arrow right there. Look at there it is. I'm trying to select it. There we go. So we need to make a slight adjustment to that code. Go back, drop this in. Refresh. Okay. Well, also, it says Lauren, not sawmill site analysis, right? So that obviously needs to change, but I'm going to change that directly in the code. I mean, you can do it just over here. So, saw. Mill site analysis. I also want it to go back to this page. So I'm going to grab that URL. And I'm actually going to very carefully plug it in here between those quotation marks. There we go. So I'm kind of modifying this code to, to suit my needs. Right, folks? And let's see, I want to make sure I, this piece of code is actually talking to that. 
And see, now it's saying portfolio, if I want to go back. And this is a missing image, right? Which we're going to correct here pretty soon. We also need to correct this. It needs to read BOL 210.12. Here we go. BOL 210. Well, notice how that's an H2 as well. So the H1 is the title of the painting. Whoops. And by the way, I'm actually, <laughs> see, see what happens? I'm actually editing the code editor instead of the code on the back end. So I was just making a simple mistake. Things, as you can see, things can get a little bit confusing really quickly. So that's correct. The That URL is correct. We changed this to say portfolio because that's, that's how we're setting up this website. We want this URL here going to that specific page. So in other words, when the user clicks on the image, it's going to go to that page or the next, or excuse me, the next, um, this is getting a little confusing. Hold on, I just wanna, I'm gonna leave this order. And right now we wanna go back in time. Um, let's just say that we want it to go to the glacier piece. Because remember, when we when the user clicks on the image, we want the we want the user to go to the next page chronologically, or whatever your your web architecture scheme is is saying needs to occur. Um, so this needs to be adjusted again. Because if the user were to click on that image and it goes to the same page, it's really not accomplishing anything. We want it to go to the next page, okay? We we still haven't resolved the JPEG information, not quite yet. As far as SEO, I'm just going to sort of riff this real quick. And so um, that particular image, I'm just gonna say architecture site Albuquerque. And then maybe even saw no. The H2 needs to be adjusted because this is BOL 10, 12, right? And then also there's a description down here, this Laura needs to be replaced with the proper title of the piece. And again, you know, I'm gonna show you guys the, the value of having that web architecture ready to go. Ten twelve. See this, I have all of this ready to rock and roll. So I could just copy and paste it. Really, really handy. Because that piece is not in Talio on paper. That piece is quite different. So it's laser scoring on acrylic and board mounted on plywood with wash, yada, yada, yada. All right. The next image actually has to be the same URL that I used up here. So let's see, where is it? Two, two. All right, now let's apply and save and see how, how well this is going to work. We go to the right one, right? Because 
we haven't worked on this one yet, but we have, we're currently working on this one. So we did make some changes. It says sawmill site analysis. If this should work, if we click on portfolio, it should go back to the primary portfolio page here. That's working. Um, this, the image isn't there. It's broken. But if I click on this, it should go to the next page, which is the glacier piece. But I have not changed any of this yet. It's still awaiting treatment. But I think you guys get the drift. So like, for example, this one will go to that one. Well, what happens with this one? Well, I'm like, because this is the last page that I'm adding to this mock website, I'm going to have this go to the original portfolio page. But, but Caulfield will go to exploded. Exploded will go to fault line. Fault line will go to sawmill site analysis. Sawmill site analysis will go to the glacier, the Norwegian glacier. At, uh, at the end of the line, the Norwegian glacier will go back to the portfolio homepage. That's the scheme that I'm trying to set up. Those are the that's the order of the ducks that in my mind will work the best for this website. And just take it. I know that this can be a little complicated. Just take it one step at a time, you guys. This is web development. Okay. There are so many details involved with this process, and you just kind of have to surrender yourself to those details. Don't try to fight them. If you try to fight these details, it's going to be frustrating. So the other thing that's happening, though, is we don't have an image to plug in. So I'm going to take a break from this aspect of the back end. I'm going to go back to pages. And actually not pages, media, excuse me. I just want to take a look and see what's going on here. If I did upload those guys. Yeah. That's all I need, in all honesty. It's all there. We're going to discover this. There's a, a slight trick that I use. So it's, it's really nice. Um, In, in web design or in with the theme backend, there are these modules that help you to get image URLs. I'm going to use an example of that. It's on the home page. And I want you guys just to kind of bear with me for a second. I'm going to bring this up too because I'm going to have to actually take some notes. And I'm going to put it. Well, actually, don't I don't want to confuse this. Let's create a whole new file. So I'm going to have to create some notes for an image path, okay? Because right now, the images on these pages, or on, on this particular page that we've been working on, the image path is broken. That's what we need. We need an image path for A, B, and C, all right? So let's see. Let's take a look here. I'm going to use one of these modules to just simply get image paths because it just makes it easier. So I'm gonna click on the gearbox and then I'm gonna just dive in. And remember, I'm not, I don't have the intent. I, this is all resolved, but I need this, this guy right here. It's going to give me the path that I need for each of these guys. So let me back up for a second. You click on this little image icon the dialog box pops up. You click on 2023, you can see that in July, I uploaded some images that we need. And notice how also there's the full image, then there's a, there's a 300 by 300, and then there's a 150. We're gonna be using the full image, okay? And so the full image, select it, and now, the, this path is leading directly to it. So all you have to do is put your cursor in there and then hit select all. On a Mac, it's command A. I believe on a PC, it's control A. You want to select all of that. Don't hit apply. You want to hit command C for copy. And then you're just going to put it over here. See, that's, that's your image path right there. Gantry Media 2023, yada, yada, yada. 
Okay. We're going to do the same thing for the other guys. I need five of them all together, and I and I want it to be the full resolution version. And I'm even going to make a note. This is fault line. It's loaded. Okay. Uh... A little tedious. Again, you know, this is just web development, guys. This is uh, the world. That was Caulfield, right? Uh, the glacier. It's... In my experience, handy to do this sort of thing and make notes and label them appropriately. Okay. And sawmill. So now we've we've grabbed the URLs that we need. Please don't hit apply because we're not trying to change anything here. We were just trying to grab the URLs and you don't want to overwrite any of the quality work that you've already done. So just cancel out of there. Simple as that. Okay, now we need to go to the appropriate page, which is the first one that we're working on is 210.12, okay. And we've got the keys to the castle to these areas that we want to modify. We've plugged in the new code. We know that sawmill needs this image URL. And look at this, where it says image source, gantry, media, blah, blah, blah. And then it says Bollinger, all that stuff. We're going to replace that very carefully within those quotation marks. And we're going to drop the new gantry image path. Apply and save. And actually over here, we're going to just plug in a couple random ones. And again, I, let's see, there it is, gantry. Save. Save. Something else going on here I want to investigate while I'm here. Hold on one moment, folks. No inheritance, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Let's check our work. All right. So now things are plugging in. This is a little bit weird. That should be up here. So we still have a little bit of troubleshooting to do. Okay. I'm trying to remember why that was doing that. So th those are just little hiccups that you kind of have to troubleshoot a bit. Okay. But I do want to say this. Now, look, the image is there. If you click on the image, it will indeed go to that next glacier page. And so it's working. And also, if you click next, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go to that glacier page. Now, th these have not, the URL is still not correct. <laughs> so you can see it's actually leading to my website. Um, it's going to totally outside, but 
you know. Uh, so these URLs would have to be corrected at some point, okay? And in the meantime, you can just simply put a pound sign or a placeholder in there. Okay. So let's see, let's do the same thing for um, the glacier now. And by the way, you know, I'm giving you this code, guys. But you don't have to do it this way. You guys, can, you guys know HTML. You can put any code in there that you want, okay? And so I'm going to give you this code, but you don't have to do it this way. I, your goal is not to make a website that looks exactly like mine. Although I think that when you're first starting out, it's okay to, to just sort of learn the ropes a bit. But HTML is easy. You guys know how to put an image on a page. But what I'm also asking you to sort of figure out is the navigation. For example, a lot of folks may not be looking at a website on a regular desktop computer. They might be looking at your website on a phone or an iPad. Well, what do people want to do when they're looking at a phone or an iPad? They just want to take their index finger and hit images, right? So you need your images to be clickable because you need to think about the user on different devices. Um, so that being said, it's just food for thought, okay, guys? And again, you can use this code however you'd like. You can modify it, whatever. So I've walked you through this example, and I've also shown you the value because it can you can make these images clickable to go to the next project page in your web architecture. Now, obviously, we, we kind of have to start from square one here, and we got to start using the code and and reformatting things and get, getting everything set up. I'll leave that up to you guys. I mean, uh, I mean, let's just for the sake of it, let's do one more. Okay. So we got to go to the fluent theme. Now we're going to go to BOL 223-3. Okay. Remember, we got to get the keys to the castle and change the inheritance so that it reads as no inheritance. Only in those two areas, the main bar and sidebar. And you have to do it twice. You know, I, I couldn't tell you why. It's just the way that the theme was developed. I'm going to do the same thing here. We need the keys to the castle. No inheritance. Yeah, we just did that one. That one. No inheritance. Apply and save. Now we can get in here, click on the blue gearbox, swap out the text. I think I might know what the problem is. Let's try making this plain text. See if that helps. Well, remember the problem I'm talking about is the, the navigation being on the far left instead of on top. I think that's it. Um, okay, so that's BOL. I could just copy and paste it too. It's no big deal. Copy it from the area above. Boom. Whoops. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. And I have this information ready to go to kind of plug in, which is relatively convenient right copy copy okay that's good um, we need to change these alt tags here. Let's change them to Norway. 
glacier and portrait. I consider those images to be glacier portraits. I also need the image source um, path, which that's why I wrote them all down all at once. So I didn't have to do so much back and forth. Very carefully, plug them in or plug that path in. Okay. The URL where I want it to go is actually the portfolio page now because that's the last image. So I need that. I need that URL. Be very careful. Make sure you don't erase those uh, quotation marks. I actually need to do that twice. And I also need to change this title again. But notice how having the, the plug and chug code ready to just kind of modify slightly will create consistency on your pages as well. That's the goal. Let's see how this looks. Okay. It's looking good. And if I click next, it should go to the, no, wait a second, folks. I think I forgot to do that. Hold on. Yeah. Next would actually be going to the home portfolio page. So many details to really kind of be mindful of, but you'll get used to it, okay, guys? Let's go back now, it should be good. Now, if I click next, it should go to the portfolio. Yes. Click next, portfolio, yes. And also clicking on this, yes. Okay, so that that's the way I want it. I still need to plug in this code over here and modify it a little bit. Let's just do that right now. I forgot to do something. I'm gonna switch out the image path. And look, there's also alt tags that I need to adjust here too. You guys know how to do that. So I'm not gonna go into all those nitty gritty details, but obviously you need to adjust alt tag. Like every single opportunity to make things right is an opportunity that shouldn't be lost. And I'm still working out these URLs. So I'm just going to put in a placeholder pound sign for now. Yeah. Same thing. Placeholder pound sign. And I'm going to use this one. I'm kind of, I, I'm, I only have five images to work with. So it's not quite as random as I'd like for it to be. Um, but I think you guys are getting the drift of this. Apply and save. Mm, one other thing that we didn't do. We need to make the slideshow go away. No inheritance. Apply and save. No inheritance, apply and save. Refresh. Not bad. Now we've got some navigation happening. Now, look, this still indicates that it's clickable, but if I click on it, it's not going anywhere because we've inputted a pound sign. And there is that pound sign up there. It's trying to go somewhere, but it can't quite go somewhere yet. 
we could set up those links. We could complete the, the loop. I'm just not quite ready to do that. So. so we're still kind of working on this idea of navigation and sort of completing the loop for these pages, right? And we've done two and there are three more to do. I think you guys get the drift as far as how to do it. I mean, I don't, maybe I should just do all three of them and just, just hammer it in, right? So let's go, there's the front page. It's looking pretty good. And notice how also, you know, I've completed these pages. I can access those pages either from the menu, but also if I'm the user, I can just click here. Look, it's gonna go to that page that I'm working on. Okay. And this is clickable. So I'm, I'm starting to connect the dots for the user. That's really all I'm, all, all I'm doing. And I'm also plugging in simple documentation. Your documentation doesn't have to be a, an InDesign composite. It can be anything you want it to be. You guys, you're in the driver's seat of your website. I don't want you to think, gosh, my website needs to look like Professor Bollinger's. No. Um, again, I'm, I'm just trying to show you the ropes a bit. And when you gain enough confidence, then you're going to think, you know, I think I have a better idea as far as how I can document my work or how I can show it to folks or how I can set up my navigation. I want you guys thinking critically when you're listening and observing my process, because I guarantee you that each of you are going to have better ideas than mine. All right. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. Let's go to Caulfield. And if we click on Caulfield, it looks like a page that nothing has been done to, right? Caulfield is 218.15. So we need to come up here, find 218.15. First thing we need to do is unlock or get the keys to the castle here with no inheritance. Do that twice. Let's see, uh, turn it off, simple as that, apply and save. We need the keys to the castle here. No inheritance. No inheritance. We need the keys to the castle to that area. No inheritance. No inheritance. All right. Now it's pretty simple. We got just got to go in there and plug in our code. Okay. But of course, we got to change a few things. Um. That particular image is Caulfield and it's 218. I'm trying to remember, you just kind of end up remembering this stuff after you've done it many, many times. But there's Caulfield right there. You can even see, guys, the why I was plugging in the Gantry Media image URLs. You see that? There you go. Okay, so that was part of my process with my own site. Caulfield is the title. I'm going to plug that in there. I'm also going to plug that in down here. Okay. Um, I also want to grab this information. And graphite, yada, 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 the description. It's down here. Be very, very careful when you're making these changes. Uh, if you even mess up one little quotation mark, it's going to throw everything off. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think everyone at this point understands the importance of detail. I also need to plug in the slug. It's, I call it the slug. It's not really a slug in this circumstance. It's just the catalog number, right? But it's 218.15. 
the, okay, let's put in the next URL. What's next? Exploded axon. That's where I want the user to go next. Plug in the URL that I just copy and pasted. Boom. I also got to change these SEO tags. I'm going to change it to uh, San Francisco. Collage. Memory. Just intuitively, you can just map these things out. I got to switch out the gantry image. Well, come over here. Caulfield. There it is. Boom. Copy. Plug it in. Now the image is going to read just fine. And remember where I got those images. I got those initially. I knew I was going to need them. So I put them somewhere safe. In a similar way, I was doing that in my own process. Look at all those gantry images. Because I didn't want to have to constantly go back and look this up and look it over and read. You know, there's a lot. If, if you create too much back and forth for yourself, this process takes a lot longer. Work smarter, not harder. Uh, another next image actually needs to be this guy. So there's exploded axon three. We know that one is next because after Caulfield exploded axon, I'm just kind of doing this by the menu. Uh, but if, if I were doing it for my site, which I did, I have the, the chronology and I know what's next by looking at this document. Okay, folks. Grab that. Plug it in. And also I want this to go back to the portfolio, right? So I got to grab, unfortunately, I got to go a little bit of back and forth. I guess I could make it my life easier. And I could plug in that portfolio URL right there. So I can just copy and paste it from there. All right. So Caulfield, yep. Everything is looking pretty good. I think I've updated everything I need to update. Apply and save. Now, the only thing I haven't done is I need to plug in some random images over here, right? And I'm going to grab the glacier for fun. And again, you guys, I would change the SEO and I would, I'm just going to make this a pound sign for now. Okay. Those pound signs are pretty handy, actually. And so it's, it's good for you guys to see me doing that. Trust me. Okay. And I'm going to grab sawmill. Now, this is text that this is code that I developed just because it made sense. And by the way, it's very, very simple. This is very much just web design basic stuff. Because each and every one of you are familiar with code. Apply and save. Okay. Let's see. Let's go home. Let's test this out. We just did exploded axon, right? Mm, no. Never mind. We were working on Caulfield. Yeah. And so the image is there. It's going to exploded axon, which we haven't resolved yet. Now, I have resolved these guys, but I have not resolved the URL in there. And that's why it's going to this pound sign. That's a little sad. It's a little difficult for me to leave things unresolved, but I'm going to try to do it for the time being because I'm trying to be uh, clear with, um, I'm, I guess I'm trying to be efficient with this process on this YouTube video. Okay, so let's see what's next. We've done Caulfield. I believe we did, no, we still haven't even done Fault Line. So we've only done those two and Caulfield. The next one that we need to work on is Exploded Axon. That's 219.10. So I'm going to come over here. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 219.10. 
again, you guys, you, it's good for you to see me just repeating these operations. Um, 219.10, we don't want the slideshow or that banner at the top. That's really what it is. No inheritance. No inheritance. Click on the blue gearbox, turn it off, apply and save. Same thing. We need the keys to those castle to that castle. It's redundant. It'll drive you crazy. It usually works out a lot better if you're listening to a podcast or if you're listening to your favorite album uh, or news show, whatever. The stuff takes time. I, I also want, this is actually a good opportunity. If you guys think that you're going to be able to do this work three, four days before the critique, whew, man, you're going to be stressed out. It's just not the way this works. You need to be doing this work incrementally, okay? And if you're not understanding something, then you need to go back and rewatch videos and you need to backtrack and you know go back five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. The information is there for you to absorb and observe. Um, but, but everything is there. I, I mean, that's what I love about this YouTube process is that, that um, uh, the steps are very, very clear and the steps are producing results. And if you follow those directions, you'll be able to do something similar. So we've got to plug in this code, right? And this is, remind me, the exploded axon. 219.10. There it is right here. I'm just swapping out information. The next is fault line. Just connecting those dot, dots, folks. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, that's the okay. And remember, I I copy and copied and pasted the portfolio URL, so I don't have to continuously go back and forth. Work smarter, not harder. Okay, so that's resolved. That's resolved. The gantry image for exploded is right here. Swap that out. Change. For me, these are landscapes. Uh, they're, they're essentially interpretations of landscapes that I see going back and forth between Diné College and Gallup, you know, places that I pass through, like wheat fields. Um, it's a landscape. You ex exploded. Oops. Exploded view. That's enough. Usually I would have this stuff written down. In fact, I do on my spreadsheet. I hope I do. Mm. I wasn't as good with that particular one. Well, that's not quite true. Here are the modern architectural space. I could have done better. So yeah, again, this is always a work in process, folks, okay? Like developing this, this scheme or system. This is a living document. In a similar way, your CV is a developing and living document as you're growing as an artist, right? Okay, apply and save. Let's check our work. Go home. 
we already set up the navigation here. So if I, in theory, I can click on VOL 219.10 here. Yeah. Except I did not plug in the images over there. So I got to go back. No problem. Because I've got the code right here waiting for me. I am going to just pick some random images. Put them in here quickly. I'm trying to be quick about this, folks. Hope not too fast. And then the URL, I want it to be a pound sign for now. Obviously, I mean, that's just another layer of navigation that eventually needs to be resolved on your end, dependent on what you're doing. But if you're doing something similar to what I'm doing, then yes, those pound signs can't stay pound signs forever. Line save. And I need to plug in a new gantry path. Okay. Apply and save. Let's check our work again. Okay. So in theory, after exploded, things should go to fault line. If I click on the image, it takes me to the fault line page, which has not been resolved yet. Same with if I click on that next. If I click portfolio, it should take me back to the portfolio page. Because I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm essentially, I'm like a spider. You know, I'm just creating all the connections of the, of, um, the web architecture. I'm webbing things together. Um, I'm going to do fault line really quick too, just because it'll drive me crazy if I don't do it. Do 12, seven, repeat the process, no inheritance, repeat the process, no inheritance, click the blue gearbox, turn it off, apply and save. We need the keys to the castle. working on it. You guys might be thinking, gosh, this class goes so quick. Well, I actually think that this stuff is relatively simple. It may feel a little daunting at first, um, but after you figure it out, you're going to realize this is pretty darn simple. Um, so yeah. Let's start on this end for a change, okay? We need this to be a pound sign, which we will resolve later. Then we need to plug in The images. Copy and paste down. One on the bottom. The glacier piece in here. And save. Now we need this code. Uh, obviously, that needs to be swapped out so that it matches the fault line 212, which is 212.7. Come over here. twelve seven. Yes. Got it. 
So you can you can sort of see that I'm starting to run on autopilot a little bit, folks. I know what I need to be doing. So the more you do this, the, the more intuitive and easier it gets. Okay? Trust me on that one. Okay. Uh, I need the next image after fault line, which is sawmill. So I need that URL. I'll do this one. And I need the fault line gantry path. I know that, I mean, so many things to kind of keep track of, right? And I'm also going to change the alt tags here. Um, this was a response. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but Point Reyes National Seashore. That's good SEO because even if someone is just looking to find images about Point Reyes National Seashore, well, maybe my Maybe my page will pop up. That's cool. I also need this last thing. Almost there, guys. Yep. Looking good. Okay. Line save. Let's test this out. I'm just kind of curious. So let's start with Caulfield. Click on it. Caulfield went to exploded. Click on the image. Exploded went to fault line. Click on fault line. Fault line went to sawmill. Click on sawmill. Sawmill went to the glacier portrait. If I click on the glacier portrait, it's going to take me home. Kind of like loop. I'm taking taking the user on a tour, right? Okay. Um, all of this stuff still needs to be resolved. Well, I mean, you guys know the dimensions of these images. How do you know them? Well, I gave them to you. So if you go to the desktop, if you go, these images are located on my desktop but I gave them to you as a zipped file via Blackboard. If I haven't, email me and ask them for me, but they're there waiting for you. I know that. So rocket launcher, pages, portfolio, expanded. There it is right there. Get info. 1000 by 750. So if you crop images or if you wanna make, I mean, that's, and then you, you know how to upload these things, guys. I've shown you. You do it under media, right? Then you get the gantry path or, you know, but you don't have to do that for that particular example. Let me show you. Sometimes if you go to Fluent Theme, and if you come down here, where is it? Pages, Portfolio. There's the slideshow up top, but then there's the portfolio info list. Just click on the gearbox and look. Actually, that is for this area right here, which I ended up getting rid of. But if you're creating a design portfolio website or if you're a photographer providing different types of services, this could be useful, right? So again, you know, the context, you guys have to own it. You have your own mission as an artist or designer. We have different missions as visual artists. Some of these things will work for you. Some of them will not work for you. So there, that's actually not the one that we wanted to find. Here it is, portfolio info list. Click on the gearbox, project one. There's the gantry media image path finder. Click on it. After you upload the image that you need, 
that's a thousand by 750, it's going to be here. We haven't done that yet, so it's not there, unfortunately. It's really important that all of these images are consistent. So if you're not formatting your images properly and exporting them at 72 DPI, that's just not going to work. Um, hmm. All right, let's. Uh, I'm feeling generous right now, so I'm going to actually. I'm going to go through that process for one of these. Remember, I know where my glacier uh, assets are. So I'm going to open up Bridge. I really like Bridge. Give me a second. It's starting up. thinking. All my assets are in this location. Uh, that painting was completed in 2022. It is. I'm going to grab, I think, let's see what I have available here. Grab that detail right there. Open with Photoshop. Again, if you don't have Photoshop, that doesn't mean you can't do this. You guys, there are browser based photo editing programs. You just got to take it upon yourself, take some self initiative and do a Google search and you can find a solution online, okay? What did I say? Let's see that they have to be a thousand by 750, okay? So I'm gonna hit C for crop. Export. Save for web. Notice how I said 1,000 by 750, but obviously this is still a huge file. So I have to come in and say 1,000 again, give it the actual size. And it's kind of nifty as well because Photoshop when you export for web, it'll show the actual dimensions as they'll appear on the screen. And so that's how big this image is in real life. Um, save. I'm just gonna put this onto the desktop and I'm gonna call it info one, all right? Desktop. Okay, that's done. By the way, I'm gonna close this out and I am not going to, I want to preserve my original. So I'm gonna say, don't save. Um, now I'm gonna go back to my WordPress backend for media, add new, grab my finder window, go to my desktop because that's where I saved it. I would usually save this in a web folder, by the way, so I can keep everything together. That's just me though. Okay, that's locked and loaded and ready to go. Now I need to go back to my Fluent theme and I need to go to the portfolio page layout. And I need to scroll down to info list. Project one, I'm gonna leave all this for now guys. I think you guys are getting the hang of this. You know, you've seen me do it many, many times. Um, info one, use that one. Save, apply and save, check your work. There it is. Obviously I didn't change any of these details, you know, but it's all there. All of this can be modified and changed.
And you guys know how to get the dimensions and use Photoshop to create an asset that can be plugged in. We haven't quite talked about the about page, which is pretty darn simple because I'll tell you why, because you guys in web design one, you created, um, you, you made a resume and CV. So this particular page, all you really have to do is go in there and drop your code in, right? Okay. I want you guys to start solving problems independently. I think, you know, at, in the beginning of the course, I said, be mindful of those big red buttons, but I think now you guys are ready to, to, to hit some buttons. That being said, um, <laughs> this is just an example. You know, if a student goes in and just starts doing that whole cowboy cowgirl thing and really messes a site up, I'm not there to see what you're doing. So it's really difficult for me to unravel that mistake. And so that's why I said, don't just go in there and start hitting buttons if you don't know what you're doing. It's better to kind of eke into this a little bit slowly so that you're not making any mistakes. And then after you have some confidence and some, some, some memory as far as what's working, then it's okay to start going in there and being a little bit more bold. But at this point, everyone should be going in there and making pages and plugging those pages into the menu and just simply developing images to plug into the front page of the site or the portfolio page on the site, right? Those are things that are relatively easy and have been shown to you on multiple occasions through the video tutorials. So the beautiful thing about these videos, if you're still thinking, gosh, I'm not sure how to do that. Well, rewatch the video. Okay. Just keep watching them because it is all there. There is no way every, every step that I have taken on where this website started and where it is now has been recorded for you all every single step. And it'll continue to be that way until the end of the course. Yeah, that's enough for today. Um, please send me an email if you're registered for this class and just let me know how things are going. I'd appreciate it, thank you.